Welcome to our new video. Say you're a beginner. You have watched our previous video and decided to install Linux Mint 21.3, the latest iteration of the very popular Linux distribution as of the time of recording the video. Now you're wondering what to do next. You're in the right place. Stay tuned. This is a freshly installed Linux Mint 21.3 in a virtual machine, but the experience would be identical in a real hardware environment. A user is greeted by Linux Mint's welcome app, which we will close now, and we will walk through it later in the video. The very first thing you have to do in a Linux-based OS after the installation is to install updates. In Linux Mint, start the Update Manager in the lower right-hand corner of the screen in the System Tray area. Usually, the Update Manager asks a user to switch to local repositories, but in this case, we will stick to the main server. It happens to offer us a new version of the Update Manager itself, so we will apply the update. And we have a problem. It happens rarely, honestly, but still it does. Let's continue ignoring the problematic packages. However, the problem seems to persist and the update manager reports an error. Ok, no need to panic, although the update manager still offers its own new version. Just a side note, Linux Mint also has an app called System Reports that lets a user know that there is an issue going on. Let's see what happens there. But after running system checks, the app reports that the only issue is that users should install Timeshift, an app that serves as a system restore utility. It's out of the scope of this video, so we will ignore this report. Let's close out of this and deal with the error we have faced. Linux has a magic wand called the command line. Beginner users are usually scared of it, but sometimes its use is a inevitable and b it's not that hard after all. Now let's put in some simple commands. The first one tells the system to pick up all the available updates from the repositories. Type in your administrative password and the package manager will do the job. As you can see here, the system reports that there are packages to be upgraded. That's what we want actually. So let's instruct it to do the upgrade with this simple command. If you look up closely, you'll see that there are dozens of packages to be upgraded. However, one of them has been kept back. So, we will take another magic wand. For now, we will copy the name of the package that has been held back and paste it into the text editor. We'll need it later. Now, we will type the letter Y here to answer the package manager's question and proceed with the upgrade of the system. Let's fast forward the video. The system has finished its job and now we will take care of the command we had previously copied. In the text editor we will first add the command that we have already seen and it will force the package to install afresh anyway. Then you need to copy the command and simply paste it into the command line hitting your enter button. The package manager will again do the trick. and following the same procedure, let's check if there are leftovers and if everything is alright. Now we will remove any surplus unnecessary packages if there are any. Everything is alright and now we can check the Update Manager app one more time. As you can see, there are no errors anymore. The next thing is to deal with the System Reports app. Since no problems were detected, you can safely quit the app.
to make the system our own, the first thing we usually do is to customize it. For instance, Linux Mint's start menu has a section called Recent Files that sometimes, at least in our experience, makes the menu oversized due to long files names. Here's an example. Let's make a test file in the LibreOffice Writer app. Let's type in some random words and we will save the file with a random, rather long name. Now, if you check the start menu, you'll see that the file name is longer than the width of the menu. So we usually get rid of that section. Right click the start menu button, click configure and then click the tab named menu. Then simply slide to the left the command show recents and that's it. Another thing we usually do at the beginning in Linux Mint is to increase the size of the panel at the bottom of the screen. The panel height is 40 by default, but we usually put it to 44. The next one is individual, but we also apply it regularly. If you don't like the way calendar and tasks are grouped, you can change it too. Right-click the clock and choose the option configure. Then slide off the option Show Calendar Events. You can also set up the date format according to your preferences. Slide the option in the Calendar app and you'll get the name of a day, the date and the time in the lower right hand corner of the screen. This is how it looks now. If you find the default looks of Linux Mint too dark, it's easy to change it. Linux Mint has a dedicated app for this purpose. You can find it in the Start menu. There you can simply choose a desktop style, appearance or color. Long time users of Linux Mint will find the old themes by clicking the Advanced Settings button. There, you'll find many of Linux Mint's old and new mouse pointers, application styles, icon themes, and desktop themes. Still, if you find this overwhelming, just go back to the simplified settings. We usually choose the dark theme. After that, you can choose a different wallpaper. Linux Mint offers several sets of desktop backgrounds. Those include the sets from all the editions of Linux Mint in the 21 series. So for the video, we will choose this one from the latest Linux Mint 21.3 Virginia set. To be productive, you need to have appropriate applications. So now let's take care of the default setup in Linux Mint. It already comes with a bunch of apps that will make you productive from the start. But still, some tweaks and additions are necessary. In the Accessories section, we'll tinker with the Text Editor app. The defaults are satisfying. However, in our opinion, the default font size might be increased. And this is how you can do it. In the graphics section, three apps are pre-installed, but you still need an app for serious work. Let's head over to the software app. This is its first time running, so it will take some time to generate a cache. Now let's find GIMP, an advanced app that many people consider as a free and open source alternative to Adobe Photoshop. And now, if you're a new user, you need to know that you will find two versions of GIMP in the software app. One is from Flathub, which is a popular platform for distributing sandboxed automatically updating Linux apps. 
Here, the flat pack format version of GIMP is 2.10.36. Since Linux Mint 21.3 is based on Ubuntu 22.04 long-term support version, there is also a version of GIMP from the Ubuntu repositories. And that is version 2.10.30, an older one compared to the GIMP from the FlatHub. If you need the newer one, you'll take one distributed as a flat pack. Otherwise, if your concern is stability, first and foremost, choose the one from the official repositories. Anyhow, just click the install button and type in your password when asked. The application starts as it should and that's it. In the Internet section, there are also apps pre-installed, including Firefox as a default web browser. An interesting thing that Linux Mint comes with by default is an app called Web Apps. It enables you to run websites as locally installed applications. Here's how it works. In your browser, open a site, the one that you use frequently. Say it is a Proton email service. Then copy the web address of the site and open the web apps application. Now, click to create a new web app, give it a name and paste the address that you had previously copied. Click to fetch the icon of the site. Then you need to choose the category in the start menu where your new web app will be stored. And that's all to it. Now you find your new web app and the menu and it will open the website in the browser, but without all those many browser buttons that you would normally find there. The next thing is the Office category. As you have already seen, LibreOffice is the default Office suite in Linux Mint. It's a free and open source program. However, it comes with free and open source fonts, and that might be a problem for people who have to share their work with those who use proprietary fonts. There may well be rendering issues while exchanging documents. So, there are many fonts here, but not those like Arial or Times New Roman. You can resolve that issue too. If you don't feel like using the command line, then in Linux Mint there is an app called Synaptic Package Manager. Put simply, it's an old-school graphical package manager. In Synaptic's search box, type in the name of the needed package. Right-click and then left-click to mark it for installation and hit the Apply button. Also, accept the license terms along the way and the fonts will be installed. Now head over to the Office category in the Start menu and open LibreOffice Writer. In Options, you can set up one of the new fonts as the default one. When it comes to the Office category, if you need it badly, you can also add Microsoft's online apps via the Web Apps application. We have already described the procedure. It will also behave like a locally installed app. One more thing, if you would like to open web apps in another browser and not Firefox, you can in Linux Mint. Open the software app and simply search for a browser you wish to install. You'll find there the most popular browsers, such as Brave, Chromium, Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, 
Vivaldi, and so on. The next category is sound and video. Again, there are pre-installed apps, but still you might need some more. Say you need VLC, a very popular media player. Start software one more time, and you'll find it right there, among the featured ones. This program comes in two variants too, one from the repositories and one from the Flathub. Let's install it. And the app works as expected. It's the right time now to talk about the welcome app, as we have promised. It's in the preferences category. Some of its functionalities we have already seen, like the desktop colors. An interesting one is called Driver Manager. The application will check if your system needs additional or proprietary drivers to work properly. In our case, none are needed. The Update Manager app is important not only because it deals with updates. It's the place where you can set up certain system tasks. Open its preferences and choose the Automation tab. Here, we usually choose the installed Flatpak apps to be updated automatically and obsolete kernels and dependencies to be removed in the same way. System Settings is an important app, too, and it's pretty self-explanatory. So, for instance, here you can customize your machine power management and set up the amount of time after which the screen will be turned off due to inactivity. And do not forget to check how you can help the Linux Mint project. Last but not least, if your hardware needs a newer kernel, it's easy to install it in Linux Mint. In the Update Manager, there is a section dedicated to kernels. There you'll see which kernel you are currently using and which ones are available to install. One more thing, you can customize the desktop itself. Right-click the desktop and choose the option Customize. Then hit the desktop settings link and then choose which icons you wish to show up on your desktop. You can also turn off the Auto Arrange option and place the icons wherever you want them to sit on your desktop. So, that's all to it basically. The essential steps you need to take in Linux Mint 21.3. If you find this video helpful, please share it with others and give it a like. Also consider subscribing to help the channel. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.